everyone. Welcome to Sunday School. And I am Mrs. Green and I will be your leader for today's session. So go on and put your name in the chat box so that we'll know who's here. And if you're visiting with us, thank you so much for joining us. Before we get started, remember we always start with a prayer and I'm going to need your help. When we pray, we pray for two things. We pray and uh, make sure the Lord knows what we're grateful and thankful for. And then we always pray for others, not just for ourselves. So I'm going to need your help. Let's think a minute. What are some things that we are thankful and grateful for? And I'm listening to see what you say. Oh, I heard family. Great. We are grateful and thankful for our family. And what <laughs> I heard you, you are so glad that school is out. So we got things that we're thankful for and grateful for. What, what is, who is someone else we may want to pray for other than ourselves? That's right. We want to pray for our K Chapel family. And what else? Oh, I heard you. You want to pray for the sick and we want to pray for the needy. Okay, we have our two things. Okay, let's get in our posture of prayer. First, we bow our heads, we put our hands together, and we hold them just below our chin. All right, let's pray. Good morning, Lord. This is a brand new day given to us so that we can share your love. We are grateful for the family you have given to take care of us. We are also so thankful that school is out. We pray for our K Chapel Church family and all churches that are open in your name. We pray for your mercy and healing power for sick and those in need. We pray that your everlasting love hold our hands as we walk in the light of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you everyone for your attention to prayer. Oh, wow, a gift. Oh, and my favorite color too, blue and white. I wonder what this, oh my goodness. This is so beautiful. Oh my goodness. And look at this, jewelry. And those of you who know me know that I like jewelry. Oh, wow, this is just so wonderful. I'm just gonna set this right over here so that It'll be there when I get ready to go. You gonna say thank you, Miss Green. You know what, everyone? You're right. I did not say thank you. I got something that I wanted, something that I needed too, and I didn't say thank you. You know what? That's an excellent example of what today's lesson teaches and helps us to understand the value of gratitude and just saying thank you. And that's thank you to the people who bless us and then thank you to God because everything in our lives come from God and we have to remember to say thank you. Today's lesson is about that. It's called I'm Grateful. Say that the title of our lesson is what? What? I'm Grateful and that's our lesson. And our lesson is taken from two books in the Bible. Uh, the book of Leviticus and the book of Luke. But first of all, let's start with our key verse. Our key verse is Luke uh, chapter 17 and verse 15. I'm going to read it first, and if you have your Bibles, you can read it along with me for the second time. Here we go. Key verse. One of the former lepers, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. Now, the next time, you read it with me if you have your Bibles. Let's go. One of the former lepers, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. Okay, remember I said our lesson scripture is taken from two books in the Bible, Leviticus. That's right, Old Testament. You are learning your Sunday school lesson. Leviticus is in the Old Testament. And we're looking at Leviticus chapter 13, verses 45 through 46. And the other book our lesson is taken from is the book of Luke. Oh, I can't get it out. That's right. It is the New Testament. So we have our lesson in the Old Testament, Leviticus and Luke, which is the New Testament, and it's chapter 17, and we'll look at verses 11 through 17. And remember, we're talking about I am grateful. And so in order for us to understand our lesson today about being grateful, I'm going to tell you a story. And the story starts in the book of Leviticus. And Leviticus tell us about people we call lepers, 
who had a disease called leprosy. And I'm holding this up because I really want you to see what it means to be a leper. And I know if you're looking at this, you're going, ooh, ooh, that, you may be feeling some kind of way about it, but that's okay because I really want you to know what it feels like and what it looks like and what it's like to be a leper so you can really understand what happens to them in the story and why it was so important. So when we look at the book of Leviticus, it tells us that leprosy or leper is someone with this disease and they have to wear these tattered clothes, their hair is unkept, and all the while they have the disease, they have to say, unclean, unclean, wherever they were, as long as they had the disease, that's right, they have to say, unclean, unclean, and that was to let the people know that they could not be around them. And not only did they have to, have to keep their hair unkept and wear the tattered clothes and say unclean, they also had to live apart, separate from everybody else. And just think about that. The life of a leper meant that they had to be apart from everybody else. And so in the book of Leviticus, it tells us, and so that we can understand what it means to be a leper. So one day, there were 10 men, or 10 men with leper. And Jesus, they saw Jesus as he was walking into Jerusalem. And these 10 men, they began begging for mercy and recognizing that only God could heal them. And so they had probably heard about Jesus and all the miracles he had, he had worked. So they were seeking him and faith and believing that if he had healed all these other people, he could also heal them. Remember now, they couldn't come close to Jesus, but they called out to him, Jesus, Master, mercy on, have mercy on us. And when Jesus saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. So guess what they did? So, so what Jesus told them to do, they went to see the priest. But on their way to the priest, they were healed. They were all healed. All 10 of them were healed. And you know, that's right, they were so excited. They were so excited, they couldn't wait. They couldn't waste any time to go back. After they had seen the priest, they couldn't waste any time to go back to get back with their families. But one of the 10 was different from all the rest. When he was healed, even though he was very excited, he remembered to do something very important. That's right, he remembered to say thank you. So he ran back to Jesus shouting, praise God, praise God, I'm healed, I'm healed. He fell face down to the ground at Jesus' feet and thanked Jesus for what he had done. And notice that he praised God and he thanked Jesus. He praised God and he thanked Jesus. So Jesus looked around and he said, didn't I heal 10 men? Where are the other nine? Where are the other nine who were healed? And Jesus said to the man, you know what? You may get up and go. Your faith has made you whole. And as you know, we might hear this story and think, hmm, think something about those nine. We might even call nine ungrateful lepers. And that's what it may seem to be to us. But let's think about that a little. Do we always thank God? Think about that now. Do we remember how much he provides for us every day? Do we recognize his constant hand in everything that we do? Do we thank him for that? Well, maybe not so much, huh? We might have to admit that we too often neglect to show gratitude and we really forget how good God has been to us and his mercy and his blessing that he gives to us every day. And you know what else? God, not, God is not only good when things go our way, he is also good by allowing other things to happen to us, but he always blesses us and he is always with us. And we have to remember that all the time in all things. Now, also, not only the healing of the leper, there's another message here that I want to make sure we don't miss. And this story shows 
the mercy that Jesus had. Remember, he healed ten lepers, but only one returned to say thank you. So think about that. He didn't punish the nine who didn't come back. So that shows mercy. Remember, sometimes uh, our parents should punish us for some things that we know we should have done and we didn't do, but they have mercy on us as well, and they don't, they may not punish us. So that Jesus was also showing mercy for the nine. And one final thing I want us to remember about the lessons, an interesting thing about the story. Remember the one that came back? Well, that one was a Samaritan. Now, you may not know what a Samaritan is or even what that, understand what that means, but think about a Samaritan as a person who's, being, who's an outsider. And you think about in school, you know the kid that sometimes you may not have anything to do with, or if you have an Instagram page, you may not, you may not um, keep it, he or she may not follow you, or you don't allow them, you don't make friends, or you don't invite them to be a friend. That's what it means sometimes to be an outsider. And the Samaritan, the one who was considered an outsider, the one who was considered different, is the one that came back to say thank you to Jesus. And that reminds us that sometimes the people we expect to say thank you sometimes may not be the people who come back to us and thank, thank us for the things that we've done for them. So I want us to remember that the Bible tells us to always give thanks. Sometimes we don't even think about, as I said, about all the good things that God does for us. It's easy for us to forget. It's easy for us to just, just take things for granted. For example, we take our health for granted until we are unhealthy, and then we pray to God, and he will heal us because he loves us. But we have to remember that in all things that we should give thanks. Now, let's review. We're going to review by doing an activity. The next activity is called fat or crap. That's right, fat or crap. So how do we do this? Here's how it works. I'm going to make a statement from the story, and you have to determine, did that really happen? Did she really say that? Did I really hear that? And, and if you say, no, I didn't hear that, then that's crap. Nah, that didn't happen. But if you remember my saying it or I read it, then that would be a fact. So let's practice. Here's one. Today is Sunday. Oh, okay, that's a fact. So you would say fact because today is Sunday. Okay, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Statement number one, I'm gonna read it. Lepers were required to ask people to come and sit with them. Hmm, is that fact or is that crap? Let's think. Oh, Mrs. Green, that's crap, because that's right, because remember from the story, it said that they would have to say what? Unclean and unclean, and they had to live apart from everybody. So that's right, they would not be inviting people to come in and sit near them. Good job, you got that one right. Okay, here's the next one. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, he met 10 leopards who had a bad skin disease. Hmm. Let's see, is that a fact or is that crap? Hmm. Did you say fact? You are right. Remember we started in the book of Leviticus and it was telling us that what that disease is and when Jesus was walking into Jerusalem, that's right. He met 10 leopards who had a bad skin disease and we call that leprosy. You are doing such a good job. That is a fact. Okay, statement number three, listen. The lepers asked Jesus to have mercy on them. Hmm. What are you thinking? Fact. It is a fact. Remember when Jesus was walking into Jerusalem, they said, Master, Master, have mercy, have mercy. Okay, you are doing such a great job. You're getting all of them right. Okay, here's number four. Let's see if you can keep this winning streak going. Here's statement number four. Jesus healed only six of the lepers. What? Oh, you yelled that out. You said that's crap. That's crap. Because how many what? Ten. That's right. There were ten lepers that Jesus healed. Very good. And here's number five. Last one. Got your thinking cap on? All right. Let's go. Last statement. Only one of the lepers returned to thank Jesus for being healed. You yelled that out before I could get it out. That is a fact. He healed ten. 
but only one came back because Jesus asked him, where's the nine? And that is a fact. Okay, boys and girls, this was a great lesson, and I want to stop right now, and I want to thank, if you noticed early on, and I got this beautiful gift, and I was just so excited about the jewelry and somebody thought so well of me. And I was so excited about the jewelry. I forgot to say thank you. So that gift was from was from uh, Ms. Sharon, who works with us in the Sunday School Department, and I didn't say thank you. So I'm going to stop right now and say thank you so much for my gift. It's something that I enjoy, and I really thank you for, for thinking about me and sharing that blessing with me. Oh, I feel so much better. I really needed to say that. And thank you for reminding me that we should always do what? Say thank you. Well, okay, that's our lesson for the day. Remember, in all things, we do what? Praise God and we give thanks, even when things are difficult. So let's practice all week just what the lepers taught us in our lesson today, that we're going to praise God and say thank you. And because I want you to have an attitude of gratitude. So let's close our Sunday school lesson with our dismissal prayer. That's right. You have to keep learning. I'm going to say the first line. It's like I echo read. We've done it before. And then you repeat after me. You ready? Okay, let, let's go. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Okay, thank you so much. See you next week. Remember that Jesus loves you and so do we. horseback riding lessons. What are you grateful for? I'm grateful that I got an A in math. What are you grateful for? I'm grateful for my new puppy Ace. What are you grateful for? I'm grateful for french fries. vacation. What are you grateful for? I'm grateful for days. for the climbing tree in my backyard. What are you grateful for? I'm grateful for chocolate chip cookies.